Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, y'all. Today, I would like to discuss the de-Islamification of Ramadan or brands de-Islamifying Ramadan. This is when brands or people on social media discuss Ramadan but deliberately exclude Islam and Allah from the topic of Ramadan. When Ramadan is celebrated as a holiday and extracted from the realm of Islam. So a brand or an influencer might discuss Ramadan on social media, but not once mention Islam or mention Allah, which is literally the whole reason why we observe Ramadan, why we fast, why we pray. It's because of Allah and it's because of our faith as Muslims. Now, this is a very niche topic. I don't know if a lot of you guys are even curious about this, but I am very passionate about this topic. One, because I've been creating content for like more than 10 years now. I started posting YouTube videos back in 2012, so we, we've been out here for a minute. And two, I professionally work in creative marketing, specifically in social media. So I literally live and breathe social media. And as a Muslim who creates content revolving around around my identity as a Muslim, I am very, very protective over Islam and my community of fellow Muslims. So let me give you all an example to better illustrate what de-Islamifying Ramadan actually looks like within the realm of social media and marketing. So say a brand like Nike, and I'm using Nike purely for the sake of this example, I am not saying that they do this in any way, but say we have Nike and they have a new product that they want to promote. Generally, they will want to push it on social media, so they will work with content creators or influencers to promote their product. Now, in the more recent years, they have been wanting to infiltrate and start targeting the Muslim community, generally because they recognize there's a lot of profit in the Muslim community. So they reach out to these Muslim creators on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, the company, in this case Nike, will pay these Muslim creators to promote their product on their social media pages. That is what we call sponsored content because the content lives on the creator's social media pages. You might also see what we call branded content, which is where the brand creates most of the content with the creator and then the content lives on the brand's social media page. This branded content is made specifically for the brand. And I do often see this de-Islamification of Ramadan with this branded content, but for the sake of this example, I'll talk more about sponsored content. Because generally, that's the type of paid content where creators usually have more freedom to speak however they want to speak. If you ever see someone discussing a product and it has the hashtag ad, that means they were paid to promote that product because legally you have to put hashtag ad or sponsored if it was a paid piece of content. Generally, when brands do this, they will give the creator a little bit of direction or sometimes a specific prompt to guide what the content revolves around. So if Nike is sending a creator new sneakers, they might say, okay, for this paid piece of content, we want you to talk about the concept of like gifting during Ramadan. Like you can gift these sneakers to one of your loved ones. And there's a spectrum of how much direction they give. Some brands give a lot of direction and they're very rigid while other brands give zero direction. And you can do whatever you want with the piece of content. You just have to post about it. But generally when the creator finishes their piece of content, they send that piece of content to the brand and the brand has to approve of what is in the post, both with the visuals and the text or the captions. So that's basically how influencer marketing works. Now, the problem that I am seeing as a creator and as a marketer is brands or people that work with these brands discussing Ramadan, but not once mentioning Islam or Allah and presenting the concept of Ramadan purely as a, I guess, like community event or community celebration and focusing mainly on things like, quote unquote, goodness, just being a good person during the month, being more charitable, being more friendly to people, so on and so forth, which is obviously accurate. We do do all of those things during Ramadan. And this is often done because most brands do not want to discuss religion. They don't want to make anything about religion. They have a much more secular approach and they don't want to see things like God or Allah in their paid content. And even in my personal experience, brands will give you prompts or direction for the content that doesn't give you the space or the room to even talk about Allah or Islam. So instead of giving a prompt 
that says something like, what does Ramadan mean to you as a Muslim? Instead, they might ask something like, what does community mean to you during the month of Ramadan? Which you obviously can, I guess, twist it to make it about Allah in some way. But as someone who has worked for brands myself, I know why brands give those specific prompts and, and ask those specific questions because they want you to avoid having more quote-unquote religious talk. And as a Muslim myself, it just feels really icky and ugh, it's just like, dude, it's not why we do it, no. And obviously I respect someone who participates in Ramadan but doesn't want to make their social media content about Islam or Allah. Everybody has that right to do so. I'm not complaining about that. But the issue lies in brands wanting to capitalize and make money and profit off of the Muslim community, but not wanting to actually understand and I guess let us represent Islam in the way that we want to represent our faith or our holy month of Ramadan. Let's look at the history of brands on social media and the relationship with the Muslim community. I started working in social media for brands back in 2014, I think. Back then, brands did not work with Muslims. It was nothing like it is right now. You would have very, very rarely seen a Muslim on a brand's Instagram page, for example. But in the past few years with the whole woke movement and pushing diversity, now every brand on social media has the token hijabi on their feed because it looks good. It makes them look like they're really inclusive and very accepting of all backgrounds, which is fine. That's great that they're doing that. But what concerns me is that it's much more about optics and looking inclusive, but not wanting to get granular with the inclusivity. And in this case, allow a Muslim to talk about their faith and their religion as they want. What does that say when a brand wants to show they support Muslim creators but don't allow Muslim creators to talk about their identity as Muslims openly and restrict them because the brand itself doesn't want to start talking about God or even presenting Islam inaccurately, like saying we celebrate Ramadan for things other than Allah and for the sake of our religion. My concern is that we are slowly going down the same path that other religious holidays have gone down, like Christmas and Easter, both having a very religious background. But over time, companies and marketers started using these holidays to sell their products and present these holidays outside the realm of Christianity, which unfortunately is how these holidays are now presented here in America, or at least here in the West, when for certain groups of Christians like Eastern Europeans or even Palestinian Christians, Easter and Christmas are very important religious holidays. Like for them, the concept of an egg on Easter isn't just about a plastic toy with chocolate inside, it has a much more deep and rich history and connection to their faith as Christians. But then capitalism got a hold of the Easter egg. <laughs> and obviously there are Christians in America who celebrate those holidays for religious reasons still, but the general public now has this very, very skewed idea of Easter and Christmas. And I kind of feel like that's the path that Ramadan is now taking in this country, where companies and people are taking the good things that they align with in regards to Ramadan and presenting those specific ideals as what Ramadan is. This Ramadan, I've been seeing so many non-Muslims on TikTok and Instagram posting content sharing that they will be fasting this Ramadan even though they're not Muslim, which is amazing. I love that. I love that concept, especially as a Muslim who grew up in America, where when I would talk about fasting as a kid, Nobody in my school knew what I was talking about. <laughs> Everybody thought I was just crazy. And it was just something that one Muslim kid named Subhi does by himself. But now seeing all these people admiring it on social media and taking it a step further and doing it with us, amazing, super heartwarming. Even when it comes to non-Muslims in majority Muslim countries. They're not Muslim, but they live in a Muslim country and they just enjoy the the vibes of Ramadan and they partake in fasting, which is also super great. We love that. You're more than welcome to join us for Ramadan, but we mustn't forget the reason why we Muslims celebrate Ramadan. We fast, we do all these forms of worship, ibadah, 
because of our faith in Islam, because of Allah. It's literally as simple as that. Now, that's not to say that we can't point out the other benefits of fasting and the other benefits of all these forms of worship, like being more charitable, being nicer to people, being more patient with your family. These are all great virtues, but we still do them because we are Muslim, because we celebrate Ramadan as Muslims and we believe in Allah. Now, I experienced this one time from the creator perspective. A brand, a really big brand, I'm not going to mention their name, but pretty much everybody in the world knows this brand. They reached out wanting me to participate in a campaign they were going to be pushing during Ramadan about the concept of Ramadan. Now, mind you, brands generally do not reach out to me for sponsored ads. I talk a lot about Palestine and my faith as a Muslim, and I'd get very, very deep into my talks about Islam. I'm not afraid to use the word Allah and discuss my faith in God. So for those two reasons, brands generally don't want to work with me. That's why you don't see a lot of sponsored ads on my Instagram or my TikTok. But this brand did reach out to me and I was like, okay, cool. Let's let's look into this. Let's do it. When I talked to the representative of this brand about the deal, they pointed out that they loved how in love I was with my faith. And that's one of the reasons why they wanted to work with me. I was like, oh, dang, that's that's not normal. That's unusual. But like, amazing i'm down but when they gave me the prompt of what they wanted me to discuss they specified they did not want it to be too much about the religion excuse me like they wanted me to talk about ramadan as a muslim but not mention too much about like god and get into too much religious talk i i could not believe they said that to me because this was in like an actual a video call like I was talking to the person webcam to webcam and they said that and I, I just I didn't even know how to answer I just like paused and I was like did they just really say that <laughs> that brand deal ended up not happening for multiple reasons not just because of that but the fact that they stated and communicated how much they admire me talking about Islam and my faith online and they love that I'm a proud Muslim but don't want me to be too Muslim with their paid post. I had already had this like nudge in me about the de-Islamification of Ramadan, but when they said that to me, I was like, bro, it's, <laughs> this is real. It's not just in my imagination. It's not all in my head. And that's not to villainize all brands. I have seen brands work with Muslims and they like make it all about Allah, which is like exactly what I would want to see more of. But unfortunately, what I've seen more of online is a more censored version or explanation of what Ramadan is. And to play a little devil's advocate real quick, there also might be the case where a brand might reach out to a Muslim creator and that Muslim creator doesn't want to make it about Allah or about Islam, which they have that right to. But my concern is when the common trend, the norm is to not talk about Ramadan, in the context of Islam and brands wanting to capitalize off of the Muslim community, wanting us to only be as Muslim as they want us to be. I just generally don't like too much fluff when it comes to discussing the religion. As a Muslim growing up in the West, especially as one with a platform, I am very particular about how I discuss Islam to the non-Muslim world, both in my actions as a Muslim and the word that I choose to describe any aspect of my faith. So that might explain why I have this perspective. So I would like to implore us all Muslims to be more cognizant about how we discuss Ramadan, what words we use to describe it, how we explain to the non-Muslim world why we celebrate Ramadan, why we fast during Ramadan, why we celebrate Eid al-Fitr or Eid al-Adha, and ask ourselves, is the answer that I'm about to give a watered down version of why we actually celebrate these things? Are we trying to cater to the Western perspective? I've had this discussion with people before and others have brought up the idea that sometimes it helps to present Islam in a way that is more attractive to the non-Muslim based on their, I don't know, their perspective, their upbringing. Frame Islam in a very specific way to make it more attractive to non-Muslims and that that might make them more interested in Islam. But that kind of sounds like fraud <laughs> to me. Because if we leave out very crucial elements to our faith, 
when we're talking to the non-Muslim world, we're not giving them an accurate depiction of, of our religion or Allah's book. If that's someone's approach, then that they have that right. But for me, especially as a Muslim creator myself, I choose another route. I choose the path of simply being very confident and sure of my faith as a Muslim and allowing that to be the reason why people are interested and want to ask me questions. And that's generally what happens in my personal life, but even on social media. I get so many messages and comments from non-Muslims saying, I'm not Muslim, but I don't know why I follow you and like watching your videos where you talk about Islam. <laughs> Which <laughs> I think is so funny and I love it. But there is value and attraction when you meet someone who is just so confident and so sure about who they are. And so maybe, just maybe, we don't have to twist the frame of Islam to make it more suitable or water it down for the non-Muslim world. Maybe we can just be ourselves and be so confident in our identity that people are attracted to it. Maybe we can just focus on developing our character the way that the Prophet wasallam taught us the way that the Quran teaches us and just being such good human beings that people are attracted to that and want to learn more about why we are like this. If you are a Muslim creator out there, this is just my humble advice. If a brand reaches out to you wanting to talk about Ramadan or Eid or Islam in any way, be firm about your beliefs and what you are willing to push to the side or not push to the side for the sake of that brand deal. If they don't want you to talk about religion in the post and you are fine not doing that, I mean, that's that's your choice. However, if they don't want you to talk about it, but you wanna talk about it, I would spend some time reflecting, okay? Think about it. What are your values? Don't just follow the money, consider the whole picture, okay? And know that Allah's watching. <laughs> in the end, Allahu alam. <laughs> Allah knows best. I mean, I'm just a generic Muslim sharing my perspective as a Muslim content creator, but also a Muslim marketer. I hope I left you with something to, to think about and to keep an eye out when you are scrolling on social media. I'd like to end this episode with the piece of advice that I mentioned earlier for us Muslims to be more cognizant, be more cautious about how we present ourselves as Muslimin? And are we doing it justice? Are we making our ummah proud by talking about our faith in this manner? Y'all take care. Inshallah, you guys have a beautiful day or evening. Allah yisahil umurkum. See y'all in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum.